Okay, I'm uh, Darren from Power Products, representative for training for the Kohler generator and transfer switches, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, this is the way you should always find your unit. What you always want to do is your key switch in auto. You want to have your output breaker in the up on position. Like any other breaker, if this is off or tripped, might make power, but it's not going anywhere. Um, for maintenance things, working on the machine, checking oil, checking fluid. You have an oil dipstick right here. Always check them with the machine not running. And you have a coolant level sight glass. It makes it a little bit easier. That sensor right next to the sight glass is a low coolant level switch. So you get your coolant drops below that, you're going to get a shutdown um, on the generator. Um, it's an ECM engine. Um, so like your car now, really not much you can do. Um, it will throw codes to the um, controller. Um, some of those codes might be a general, and you might need to have someone come in, essentially plug in, and see what the see what a, the code is um, on the unit. Uh, maintenance is fairly simple, recommended by the manufacturer. Um, every uh, 150 hours of continuous operation, um, doing an oil change um, or yearly oil and filter. Um, coolant um, is about five years if you can keep it clean. If you contaminate it, you might end up down about three years uh, with coolant. Um, starting batteries, um, they're about three years lifespan. Um, sometimes they'll go longer, sometimes they'll go shorter. Um, three years, usually a good rule of thumb. Um, battery charger and block heater. Your block heater's right down here on this one. has a little okay. circuit pump plugged into an outlet, um, you will have a low coolant level, low coolant temperature um, alarm. That's a warning. Um, that is not a shutdown. Um, if battery charges on the other side, um, plugged into an outlet, um, that will give you, if the outlet goes dead or you know, GFCI or the battery charger fails, you'll get a battery charger fault. Um, you have your typical low battery, high battery, um, typical generator shutdowns, low oil pressure, high temps, um, over voltage, under voltages, anything that comes to protect either the system or to protect your building, this uh, machine will shut down. Um, if in the event you do go into a shutdown, you will get your audible alarm. You'll have your fault light. We can silence the alarm by quickly pressing the button. Um, from this screen, we can see what the alarm is by touching the alarm bell. Now we'll open up our screen and we are in a, our local emergency stop shutdown. In order to reset that, this is my off reset button. I got to press and hold that for three seconds, <coughs> but my key switch has to be in the off position to do that. My key switch is off. I have not reset this fault. So if I try to reset it, it's not going to do it. Once I reset the fault, the condition, now my fault light goes out. But I'm still in a warning because I'm not in auto. I go back into auto on the key switch and I go into auto here. With this key switch option, these uh, these the off button doesn't work except to reset. You cannot put it in auto by pressing the button. You cannot put it in a run by pressing the button. You have to use the key switch. It's one of the one of the options. Um, if in the effect, if for any reason this key switch fails through the software, we can go in, turn the key switch off, and, and activate those buttons again. But you get one or the other. Um, if your generator is running um, and you see a blinking light over auto, that means the generator is in the cool down mode. And once it shuts down after its five minute cool down, that light will go solid again, and you'll be ready to go in your in your automatic operation. Um, as for your touch screen of your controller, uh, we set it up so you can, if you're keeping a running log when you are running on building, um, that your um, voltages line to line line up with the currents, phase one, two, and three. Does it show hours? Uh, on the second screen. So you have oh, okay. your, your first screen here is your electrical side. Press this button to get over to this second screen. There's all your engine information and your engine hours. Okay. Um, 
these are, um, I guess for lack of a better term, pictograms for what the menu is. If you, if you, until you get familiar with it, if you hit this top button, and then gives you what the pictogram means. So you can go into metering, uh, and we can go in and get a little bit more um, information if you wanted to. Say into the generator, let's say you wanted um, line to neutral voltages, you can go in and scroll through. You have four pages of electrical information. So you can get a little bit more detailed information, but for the most part, we set up those two screens. Really, that's about all anybody's going to log or need. Um, and just to get back, just hit the home button up here. There we'll go. Go. Um, and then again, toggle back and forth between the two. Um, the two front screens, for the most part, that's all the information that we yeah. that we need to know. I'm familiar with Kohler. This is a nicer screen than some other ones, but I'm, we have Kohler generators, other buildings. So okay, yep. Um, so the reset process again. You got to go to off, press and hold three seconds. Um, the good thing with this controller um, is a couple good functionalities to it. If you're doing a building load test and you require to run all your readings, you can. Put in a USB thumb drive in, into this port, um, and you can actually run a data log, um, and it prints it out or gives it to you in an Excel file, and you can take that in one second, ten second, one minute, um, fifteen minute increments, however you want to you want to do that, and then you can you got to run a if you're required to run a three hour building load test, you could put that in there, and at the end there's your there's your report if you needed to, no um, and you would no do that through the the data log feature so when i did your load bank test yeah um i did the data log on this and so i've already put in a, all my engine and, and output information and i was logging in a, at a one second interval you can you can data log for a long time in an excel file with a with a thumb drive that way and so all you would do is um with the usb in there that start log would go would turn into that color blue and then you just hit start start your building load test come back hit end Pull the thumb drive out. There's your data lock. Cool. No built-in um, load bank, though. Uh, not on this one. Okay. No, nope. wasn't required as part of the job. Yep. Um, touch screen does get a little funky just because the they're, touch it's, they, it's you know your phone your phone touch screens mm -hmm. built mm -hmm. to last a few years. This thing's they're trying they got to make this thing last twenty. Um. So. Um, other than that, you're, again, your your block heater, your battery charger is plugging in right here. You want to make sure that if you have any of those faults, um, checking your outlets for power, um, making sure the breaker didn't trip, um, things like that. And so, really, exhaust exhaust goes up, radiator goes up. Really, about it for these is not much to it. We have a service contract on it, anyways. We're not going to touch it. Other than troubleshoot, to call somebody in if something something more we can do. So, yep. Yeah, good. Now, pretty and much the standard. faults on these, uh, when this thing does shut down on a fault, yeah. if it gets a uh, any shutdown fault, it's going to give us a snapshot a um, um, few seconds before and a few seconds after that shutdown so we can see what, what happens. Sometimes hmm. they're useful. Sometimes they're just numbers on a page. Yeah. But, okay. Cool. So not much to it. Did we get any spare parts as part of the package? Um. I didn't bring any of the site, so I assume it was not part of the. I just sometimes we do, and sometimes we don't. Yeah. I don't know on this one particular. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes I know. Sometimes they give a, a whole bunch of oil filters and air filters, and they sit in a box over in the corner for ten years, and then get thrown out when the next it's, guy comes it's in. Usually, the best one is the uh, block heater. Those tend to go. So those are nice to have on site. Yeah. These. So this block heater here has a circ pump in it. Yeah. So it's nice. So it's always circulating. So the you lessen the chance of it getting into that water blockage, um, stagnant water flow so that the element just boils off. These are always running water by it, so they tend to last a little bit longer. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Good. Uh, familiar with these latches? I don't know if you... Have them down, the same one downstairs. This okay. is a, it's a 300 downstairs. Okay. So. Yeah, so the, yep. the pin on the locks and... Seven. Uh, yeah, so this side of the engine, there's nothing much here. To have your battery racks. Yeah. I don't Pretty like to look at that. I'll come up and look at that in a minute. Oh, yeah. Let's see what's going on there. We might have just burped that out from the last time when we did our run. But battery charges mounted right there. Plugged in underneath. 
Yeah, I'll come back up after we're done. Okay. All right, to the transfer switches. <coughs> um, all right, so your transfer switch here. Um, right now it's telling us our normal source is available and we're connected to the normal source. Um, our generator is not running, um, so our source is not available and obviously we're not connected to. Um, it takes the, whatever source of power it wants to switch into, that's the power it uses to switch. So it can't go into emergency position using utility power. It has to use generator power to go into emergency. Same thing coming back. It has to have utility power coming in. It senses it comes back automatically. Correct. So once if it's if it was outside of range, then it, it wouldn't accept it, and it would. So let's just say we drop another um, 10, 12 volts on this. It's not going to like it. It's going to start your generator run on generator. Um, so it gets out of those gets out of those windows, the acceptable windows. Okay. So. You could have that, let's say that was at 450, that would be unavailable, that light would go out as far as it's concerned. It knows it's there, but it doesn't like it, so it's gonna run on generator. Okay. So, you know, protecting you from brownouts, over voltage, under voltage conditions from utility. Um, telling us that our system is ready. Our next no load exercise um, is 1220. That's, update's wrong. Yeah, we'll check, we'll double check that in a minute. Um, at 7 a.m. So we'll, we'll go back through and make sure that that clock is moving. Um, our normal voltage is, again, 467. Our emergency voltage is zero because our generator is not running. A um, couple different ways you can test the machine, um, either by the uh, utility feed breaker downstairs. Uh, by turning that off, that's going to put this into an outage. Generator would start, um, transfer over. Uh, once you return that utility on, we would... Uh, run our retransfer time delay, which factory set on these for 15 minutes, um, and then we're going to a five minute cooldown shutdown. Your other way is using the test button. Um, passwords were not changed from the default, four zeros, yep. up arrow to the zero, and press OK. The first type of test is our auto load 30 minutes. This actually gives you 45 minutes of generator on building time. This 30 minutes, it's just the load time. Yep, the, the 15 minute of retransfer and then the five minute cooldown. You hit start, you walk away, it does that mm -hmm. whole run all by itself. Yep. Our next test, if we down arrow, is our loaded test. If we hit this and press start, our generator is gonna start, transfer, and it's gonna stay on generator until we come back and hit end. We have to come back to the screen and hit end. And then we have our unloaded test. Same thing with that last loaded test, we hit start, which in this case, we're on a no load. We'll let the generator start up. There we go, generator starting to come up. Now our generator voltage is available. And you can see now we have this end test button. So it's the same way with that loaded test. The auto load, press start, walk away. Loaded or unloaded, we have to come back and then hit end test. So once now we hit that end test, now we go into our generator cooldown. Five minutes from now, our generator would shut off. Yep. Uh, the cooldown is handled at the generator, not here. Um, Rubona, I don't think this this doesn't run elevator, does it? No. No, the one downstairs does. This is only for the lab the elevator's space. Elevator's in the room next door. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I think this is just a standby. There's no emergency lighting on it, so... It's just the brown equipment, all the mechanicals. Question for the electricians. I don't care what it runs, as long as it goes through here. That's all I care about. 